When you think of French cars with fancy doors that made their manufacturer a massive loss, the Renault Avantime comes straight to mind. But Peugeot got in the act too with this, the Peugeot 107 or 1007. Uh, they wanted to call it the 1007, but a certain film franchise didn't really think that was a good idea. And in French, of course, it'd be Mille Set. But uh, yeah, the, the real trickery comes with the doors, which are electric sliding. Not that unusual, we sit them on MPVs and stuff, but very unusual to have them as the only door on the vehicle. But of course, the, the big advantage of these doors is it means getting in and out is really, really easy in a tight situation, which is most of today's car parks. And uh, yeah, it certainly makes getting in quite quick and easy. There are people who say it's a bit of a downside when it's raining really heavily and you want the door to quickly close because it kind of doesn't. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting bit of trickery, but ultimately a very expensive one. And that meant that with this car, which was quite expensive, about 10 to 13 thousand pounds new back in 2004, 2005, yeah, Peugeot made a loss on pretty much everyone it sold. Uh, a ma fairly massive loss. So uh, ultimately it didn't really work, but it's quite an interesting design. The design is by Pininfarina uh, and uh, I can see little interesting elements here in the sort of back corner section is quite nice. The rear lights are actually quite funky, but ultimately what is it? No one really seemed to know. It was all about the funky, funky doors until they went wrong and things broke. But um, Thankfully, these ones seem to be fully operational. You can manually override them in an emergency, but uh, obviously you want to use them in electric mode most of the time. The actual platform of this car is the Peugeot 206 Citroen C3 and C2. Well proven, if not particularly exciting. Uh, petrol engines, well, our petrol and diesels available in 1.4 or 1.6 forms, starting at around 75 brake horsepower, going up to about 110 with the 1.6s. This is a 1.4 Dolce, it's the bottom of the range, but like I said, they were quite well equipped. So um, let's see what we've got to play with inside. So yeah, get, getting in, really nice. And then you just do that, or is it that? There we go. And the door will close. And all goes much, much quieter. But in terms of kit, we've got um, electric windows, as you might expect, power steering, air conditioning on every model, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure the extra specs got you a lot more. There was an SE and a Sport. And from looking at the trim levels, uh, I think different seats and alloy wheels are about what you get, maybe front fog lights, that posing feature of the early 2000s. But in terms of the driving position, it's quite van-like, very upright. Um, but I will say there is no room for my clutch foot to the side of the pedal, which is a bit unusual. This box in the middle is quite chunky but nonetheless I quite like the driving position I like a uh, heat a seat that is some way from the floor so we've got the electric window switches here conventional five-speed gearbox some quite stylish little roll around vents they're quite nice and we've got some infotainment something or other going on down there let's fire up the ignition and see what that brings up oh there we go so we've got an onboard computer to give us things like MPG, um, try and find the right button to make that change. And uh, it can't be those buttons. You can't reach those while you're driving. That's not very practical, is it? No, apparently they don't want to change. Oh, that, that seems to be mute. So we've got some radio controls on the wiper stalk as well. But uh, yeah, usually one of these buttons would cycle you through um, things like that. Never mind. Uh, we've got electronic stability program is one of the first cars to have that. They have a pretty particularly good safety record as well quite good in a collision uh, so you know there's that to the advantage but yeah really nice plenty of space good visibility nice big windows uh, with these little extra front windows um, giving just a bit more visibility so yeah not bad at all let's see what it's like in the back which means we've got to do this again <laughs> there we go so right tilt the seat and it goes forward as well. Got a lovely Stranger Things cushion in here. That's nice. But, um, ooh, that's feeling a little bit cosy and claustrophobic. Uh, I think I can bring the head restraint up so it's not in my back. But, uh, yeah, it's not the most generous. 
with the seat set for me my seat my legs are in the back uh, of that seat but uh, if you just hop out for a moment dear camera lady we've got stuff on the back of here it's like a clipboard so you can actually put items in there i did wonder if the whole seat might fold entirely forward i don't think it does so but uh, at least that makes it easier for me to get back out again, he says. But yes, yeah, a bit claustrophobic, with small windows that don't open. Uh, but side airbags are a feature. Get me out in the boot. It's quite deep, but it is a very high lip. But uh, yeah, a good amount of space in there. And it looks like these seats fold down. Oh, you can actually move them backwards and forwards. Uh, pull that down, is it? Oh, there we go. So this, oh, so I could get myself a little bit of extra leg room or you can move the seat forward to get more boot space and uh, you can obviously tip the seats as well so a fair bit of practicality there I'm going to push that down so that doesn't block my vision later on so under the bonnet of this example slightly lost in here we have the 1.4 TU engine uh, these, these engines were new um, in the Citroen AX uh, fitted to slightly later Peugeot 205s. Good hardy little unit, they even fitted them to Citroen BXs. So it's a bit old school, single overhead cam, but you know, a pretty efficient little engine. If getting a bit dated by the time these were built. Uh, they did fit a later 16 valve engine, I believe, to slightly later ones of these, but they were only in production for four or five years. They're just not a successful car at all. Right, we shall get underway, I shall close. The doors, it's a neat trick and you can buy these really cheap. So uh, what was yesterday's disaster makes a perfect affordable hub nut car. I will say one downside is the uh, seat belt itself is some way behind you. So you have to go fishing for it. No handy little helper hand like you get in certain Mercedes coupes. Uh, we shall start the engine and do one thing I've been dreading on this car, the windscreen wiper test because oh nice washers look at that that's a poor lit. look at this triangle of doom here big big triangle of doom look we've already got the drivel of disappointment is um yes causing us a headache already i mean mind you my citroen blingo does exactly the same thing but still hmm. at least we've got a missed function but slightly irritating should we do a rear wiper test while we're at it if i can remember which way that is oh yeah that's that way Oh, look at that. It actually pauses. I like that. Pauses to allow the screen wash to build up on the window before it wipes. So uh, a very pleasing rear wiper performance at least. But oh, I still got dribbles of disappointment causing me despair here. Right, getting underway. It does feel a very old school engine. But it's quite a heavy car for its size unsurprisingly because of all this complex door mechanism it's one of the things you know now pretty much every mpv if anyone still makes an mpv has power sliding doors power tailgate all this nonsense that we all apparently need right full force of acceleration that's it 40 50. Admittedly, we're slightly uphill now. 60. 60. After an age, we reach 70 miles an hour, and isn't it buzzy? I would not describe that as um, a relaxing cruiser. But then, you know, this is the Hubner engine. This is absolute bottom of the range. But still, 10 grand's worth of car back in 2005 when you would have paid only 8 grand for a Citroen C3. So, I guess Peugeot pitched it high because they were desperately trying to claw back some money, but uh, they still didn't sell enough of them to cover their considerable development costs. It's such a peculiar car. It must have been someone's pet project. Now, I'd love to know what that person's doing now. Because I imagine it isn't um, designing motor cars. But the ride's very good, very compliant. 
but uh, yeah you wouldn't want to do too much motorway driving in this thing it's getting on for three and a half thousand revs the windscreen seems a long way away but that's not so bad I guess it's kind of a monoblock uh, style so a bit like the Renault Espace just obviously that bit smaller but I don't think the rear seat access is particularly good despite that sliding door so I don't think it appeals to people with small families and uh, really I'm not sure who would ignore other deficiencies of these cars to just say yes I want a car because it's got funky doors so the depreciation on these has been absolutely horrendous as a result because there's the used car market doesn't really want them either so it's possible to pick these up for comfortably under a thousand pounds more tempting of that money not so tempting when it's thirteen thousand pounds it is very similar to the time in that where does it fit because if yeah. it's always marketed as a mini mpv yeah it sort of is but but, but it hasn't got the, it hasn't got enough functionality being on the 206 rather than say smaller it's not a super mini no so where does it sit? And I think it's the same with the Avantime. Stunning, stunning piece of design, but where yeah. do they fit in the market? Exactly. And you know, sometimes it doesn't hurt to think outside the box and go, okay, the market's not demanding this, but it could be. You look at cars like the Range Rover. The original Range Rover came about because the engineers thought it would be a good idea to have a 4x4 that had comfort. But no one had asked customers if that's what they wanted. And initially the you know rubber floor mats and things weren't what people wanted they actually wanted more luxury and then we had the rise of the SUVs as a result massive luxurious things but uh, yes it clearly the market did not really want this vehicle at all and after a strong first year where they sold 53,000 examples production tailed off rather dramatically the first year of full production was 53,000 units although that was still some way short of the 100,000 they thought they would sell a year so yeah someone must have got in a lot of trouble because this went very very badly wrong but like I say yesterday's white elephant can make a lot more sense as an affordable run around today um, I think I'd definitely be tempted by the 1.6 diesel though I know the 1.6 HDI has its own issues but uh, yeah, this is just far too revvy. Maybe the uh, 16 valve petrol isn't so bad, but there's an awful lot of engine noise for what would have been priced as a premium small car. The gear change isn't particularly pleasant, uh, I'm going to say. This front half of the cabin is massively spacious. Yeah, it, it works really well as a two-seater. It's just unfortunate, but it's actually uh, a four-seater. But I thought we'd come off the motorway because that's not necessarily where these cars were expected to fry. So we'll try it around town where the um, comfortable ride is going to be rather more pleasant. And it's a very well mannered engine, it's very quiet at these speeds. In fact, I can probably even get away with fifth at 30 miles an hour. Yeah, I can. Did about 1200 revs in fifth gear and it's entirely happy. It's a very well mannered little engine. I really rate the uh, TU. It's appeared in great cars such as the Citroen AX GT. Uh, they, I think they did a sporty version of the 205 in some markets that had a twin carb version of that engine. So uh, yeah, it, it, it's a good little engine. I just think a little too much has been asked of it here. A Peugeot 205 is a very light little hatchback and this isn't. But yeah, the steering is very nicely weighted. Um, it does roll a little because you're sitting so high up. but. It compares very favourably with our Citroen Berlingo, which also has that high up feel. I hate that indicator noise though, that's awful. I almost think of it Space Invaders about it, but not, it just isn't quite cool enough to pull that off. Yeah, this car is um, surprisingly joyous to drive slowly, and uh, that certainly can't be said of a lot of cars, uh, especially more modern cars. They can be a bit fussy around town. This engine just pulls so well below 2000 revs. It's not like turbo diesel brisk, but it's um, yeah, very happy. It is a bit weird though. You really do feel how far back you're sitting. When you, when you turn a tight corner, it does feel like you're sat in the back of the car. It's slightly peculiar. It's not really making best use 
of the front wheel drive transverse platform that was the whole point you could sit further forward and have more space so that's a little bit weird yeah the, the fact that they called one of the trim levels sport is all the more laughable really the sport didn't have any more power than any other model i think it got alloy wheels and possibly sports seats so uh yeah if you're trying to market this as um, fun and sporty and a bit sexy uh, that has to be catastrophic fail what happens if you try driving with the door open well apparently you can oh it, it doesn't like it it's not happy it's flashing the interior light at me to warn me there's an issue it, it's not happy it doesn't like it But you can actually do it. There you go. So if you don't mind upsetting the car enormously, you can drive it with the uh, door open. Okay car, okay, okay, okay. So it just beeps at you and flashes the interior light, which is quite amusing. You can try driving it with the door open. Obviously, I do not recommend you try driving one of these with the door open anyway, but I know you were thinking it as well. But yeah, I, I think actually a really good car. Uh, fundamentally, unsurprisingly with the underpinnings, the French are very good combining ride and handling. It's actually a nice car to drive. It is underpowered, but you could solve that by buying one with a, a slightly more powerful engine. It, it just, yeah, it's really nice. It just feels really special the seats are especially comfortable uh, so it's a shame this one doesn't cruise more happily at speed because you kind of just want to drive it for miles the steering wheel feels really nice in the hand there's a lot here to like about this weird little peugeot but uh yeah i hope you've enjoyed that uh, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in a future video farewell Apparently it doesn't have one of those. The whole new moron. Yeah. Oh, there it is. <laughs> if you press it gently, no horn. Dang it. You have to be angry. <laughs> there you go. I've just noticed an issue. Uh, film forward. We're about to lose the passenger wiper blade. That is not very attached. There we go. Aha! Now we've got our gap down there again. Bonus extras when Hubnut tests your car, but it doesn't done it. It's made our triangle of doom even worse. Right, where's my seatbelt gone? <laughs>